He enjoys playing football with friends, watching horror movies, and occasionally he practices the piano. He's very good at the piano. He can play all the songs in his great and great eight anthology, forwards, backwards, and sideways. He'll do that perfectly too. He's regarded as the best piano player in his school, and okay, I lied, he doesn't really practice occasionally, he practices six hours a day. Now that might seem like a lot to you, but it's the same amount of time you you and you spend on Facebook. <laughs> now think, how good at Facebook are you? That's how good at the piano Han Bin is. There's a problem though. Although he's technically brilliant and plays his pieces exactly like famous recordings of famous pianists, he's not going to become nearly as successful as A, he wants to be, B, he can be, or C, he should be. Now here's why. Hanbin looks at what he's passionate about, the piano, as if it was fixed. As if it was like a wall that if you pushed hard enough and for enough time would give way to riches and happiness and success and magical power. But sadly, that's not how the world works. You can't treat talent as if it was constipated and just push excellence out of it. <laughs> In order for him to truly excel at what he's passionate about, the piano, he has to look at it from a fundamentally creative perspective, as something that he has the power to change. So he, he can't just look at it as something to work hard on. He has to be able to make his mark on piano playing. Now, my buddy Wesley and I, we were the environment guys. We were passionate about the environment. How many of you think you're passionate about something? Anything, you know, like a sport, an activity, a cause, whatever. Come on, you can raise your hand, don't be shy. Great, so then you guys know what I'm talking about when I say that passion feels different. Passion is not the same as love or any other emotion. It's deeper and more visceral, yet still intellectually detached. Passion moves us in strange and profound ways. Now, Wesley and I, right, we started the Local Environment Action Force, or LEAF. It was a student-led initiative that acted forcibly upon the local environment, hence Local Environment Action Force. Um, our first project involved saving electricity in our humanities club. See, in our school, light bulbs are arranged in threes. So whenever you want light for reading, writing, arithmetic, texting, whatever else you do in classrooms, you don't get one light, you get three. In addition, these rooms have full-length windows. So there's ample natural light. Wesley and I, we thought, sure, it's important to have well-lighted classrooms, but this, this is ridiculous. So we kind of just went around and yanked out a third of the bulbs. <laughs> we thought we owed it to the environment and ourselves. To, yeah. <laughs> now, in my opinion, the best way to be passionate and to stay passionate and motivated is to immerse yourself in whatever you love and to do it with a creative energy. Now, most of us know that truly marvelous things can only be born out of passion. But we often forget that being fresh and creative is a large part of being passionate. I mean, what's the point in trying to change the world if we're not changing it in a new and special way? Immersion, it opens us up to the richness of our surroundings. It opens us up to new ideas, new perspectives. And immersion doesn't only mean doing what you love 24 hours a day. It doesn't mean playing piano 24 hours a day or trying to convince your neighbors to switch to LED lighting 24 hours a day. By the way, LED lighting is energy efficient, very practical. Great, you should all switch to it. <laughs> so yeah, immersion, it opens us up to new ideas. So back to Leaf, my little force of eco-warriors. Um, I, in, in hindsight, I found that the most incredible part of LEAF was the fact that I could do it with one of my best friends, Wesley. It, we could talk about LEAF all the time. And this, this made us, this 
open us up to new ideas because we can talk about leap all the time. Um, we could discuss any crazy idea, no matter how unexpectedly it popped up. We could keep our eyes and ears peeled for new and exciting things, knowing that if something jumped out at us, we could incorporate it into one of our ideas. It, it kept us. This kept us spontaneous and hungry, and we knew that uh, we knew that we had to find new, diverse inspiration in order to make people surprised and in order to teach them something new about the environment. We found that anything, an avant-garde art project, a new idea for a school in Bali, a baby monkey riding on a pig backwards, they were all useful to the cause in some way or another, even the baby monkey. Um, one of the, my favorite parts of LEAF was the fact that every Friday we'd get together in the library, we'd sit down in front of a computer and we'd do LEAF stuff. Now this, in my mind, was the best part of LEAF because we could just, we sat down and trawled the web for absolutely any new idea that came our ways, anything we could incorporate into our projects. Uh, we, we learned that the best ideas come from the most unlikely of places. And in order to be surprising, in order to teach people something new about the environment and about themselves, we had to be receptive to new ideas. We still did all the research, we still read all the articles, and we still pitched to the cynics who couldn't care less about carbon offsets or phone recycling. But our minds were open, knowing that even those very cynics could provide some sort of insight into saving the environment. Now, in one of our projects, we had to find a striking way to close the library door. I mean, it had this annoying locking mechanism where if you opened it up, it would just get stuck. And then people, being people, we just walk in and out thinking, ooh, it's open, how convenient. Not realizing that precious energy was being wasted on the air con. So Wesley and I, we decided that we needed to stop this. We, we got one of the artsier members of, our, of, our, of LEAF to create one of those cheesy US Army Uncle Sam posters. One of these, with a twist. We, she created an enormous plastic hand and just stuck it to the poster. So next to the library door, we just have this flat poster with this creepy, eerie hand pointing out at all the passerbys, urging them to close the library door. It made people stop. It made people stare. But then something wonderful happened. People started closing the library door. <laughs> it, it was amazing. I mean, it was amazing. <laughs> this is why we need to harness creativity along with passion. I mean, doing things better than it's ever been done before is why we need to harness creativity and passion together. Sometimes we need to do something totally unique that no one has ever done before. But sometimes we need to, sometimes we need to do something totally unique that no one has ever done before. But other times we can just do something a little different. And we know that it can be equally effective. Now, immersion doesn't only Take place, doesn't only apply to these massive ideological concerns like saving the environment or anything. Immersion also comes up, you know, the benefits of immersion, that is how creativity feeds passion and vice versa. They also come up in improvisational theater. Now I did improv for a while, which is basically drama made up on the spot. And for our performances we get, um, we get themes or locations, so we might have to do a scene in a toilet, or we might have to do a scene and incorporate lost love into it. And if, we, and if we weren't totally immersed in the scene for those three minutes, our ideas would stutter and our scenes would choke and fail. Now the main strategy in improv is to say yes to every idea, to accept and commit to every new idea, no matter how ludicrous it was. So if someone just pulled out a pineapple in the middle of the scene, we'd have to commit to it. We'd have to commit to the pineapple. We'd have to be like, yes. A pineapple. What a perfect addition to this funeral procession. <laughs> so yeah, if we, if we weren't totally immersed in the scene, totally immersed in the pineapple, we, our doubt would stop us from using the ideas we had in the scene and using them to the, the full potential. We have to trust, as improvisers, that magical thing that is spontaneity. We have to trust that if we were passionate about the scene, the ideas would come. Now, passion, as you've seen, is useless without creativity, and creativity falters if it's not backed up by passion. If 
I'd like to leave you with this. If we don't embrace open-mindedness, passion, and creativity together, we'll never be able to live in a world where people can speak freely without fear of punishment, where companies and organizations actually care about the impact they make on the world, and where stale, worn-out principles can be moved aside and be, repl and be replaced by newer, fresher ones. Building a better world starts with caring about the things that surround us. And this begins with immersion. Thank you.